Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today I thought I'd do a little challenge. I'm going to challenge myself to painting a fall autumn bouquet with one brush, cat's tongue brush. If you've never used this brush, it's a great brush. You can create great leaves and amazing flowers with it. Super simple, super simple. I'm going to show you how I use this and I'm trying to create my own unique um, bouquet and I'm going to show you how you can do this, how you can create your own unique bouquet, your own creation by just taking some pictures off the internet, right? And this is how I go about it. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comment below. And what, what kind of challenge are you working on or what kind of challenge would you like to work on? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear it. Also, uh, check out my Patreon, ad for your videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream that top tier is just once a month. It's just a place people go and support my channel, which I appreciate so much. And also you get first dibs on all my retreats and workshops. So check it out. There's a link right up here, boop, in a second. So let's get painting an autumn bouquet using all my techniques. All right, let's go over everything that I'm gonna be using for this tutorial. I'll be using the Princeton half inch Neptune series cat's tongue brush. It's a great brush. Um, the Arsh 100% cotton cold pressed paper. This is that pad right here. Um, pa paint and palettes. So I'll talk about like the paints I'll be using. And I printed out like I talked, um, printed out some images from the internet. So this is how you create a design that's kind of your own creation of a bouquet without trying to copy and without, um, you know, the photograph that you've taken, right? Because maybe you don't live in an area that has beautiful fall flowers. And so you need to take, you need to find a photograph that does. So I take this photographs off the internet and then I take things that I'm drawn to. So I'm drawn to the colors of this bouquet and the, the kind of spacing and the movement of this bouquet. I don't know why the lighting just went like that. Um, so they kind of combine them, right? I do like some of the things on this one and some of the things on this one. And we can talk about color palettes. See, it's mostly like almost like an analogous harmonious palette because the colors are next to each other, but then you've got that cool green, right? Which I talked about in one of my uh, tutorials. But then they complement the red and the green, right? You can see the intensity of the two colors there in here, just kind of stands out. You take them away, it's really nice and cool. So things to think about when you're doing your paintings. Um, the challenge for me is this cat's tongue brush. Let's just stick with one brush today. Let's do it all with one brush. It's always good to have a challenge, right? You're going to challenge yourself to do like painting um, a flowers every day for five days, a birds every day for five days, something like that, or 10 days. I did a, um, one of those Instagram 30 day challenge, birds and flowers. It, it's tough. Oh no, it was, I'm sorry, it was 100 days worse. <laughs> but it really, really gets you to like, get you out of, not even in comfort zone, but like you have to get really creative. You have to really think outside the box, right? So challenges are good. I think I'm gonna do a challenge. Leave a comment below what kind of challenge you'd like to see, right? We're gonna talk about this. I think we should do some challenges. It'd be, it'd be kind of fun on this channel. So you can draw out what you wanna do, but I'm just gonna kind of, this is where we go intuitively, right? I'm just gonna kind of wing it. And I'm gonna talk about things as I do them. You can either start with a flower or the stems, wherever we want to go. I might just start with some like Adelia. I have this color already mixed up. So I just took some opera with some yellow on this one and mix up this nice blush color tone, which is kind of like this blush. And for Adelia, just kind of pushing down these little petals like this. See that? Let me zoom in a little more. See, it makes a nice, if you just, just a little short, just don't push down all the way, like you would with the sunflower. You just use that point. I'm gonna mix up some more. This paper really soaks up the paint. And then you can go back in when that dries and do another layer. You get where I'm going with this? A little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker. I have a, a Dahlia tutorial uh, on YouTube, so I'll try and link that below. And then for the sunflower, I mixed, a, you know, I took the yellow, mixed a little bit of the red here because I don't want it just plain old yellow. This brush is great to make sunflowers. I have a tutorial on that too. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna start with the sunflower over here. So there's no sunflowers in this bouquet, but there is one in here. So this is how you combine them. See, combining, I'm putting a sunflower in here. Just pushing down, make a little short ones on the front. 
and that's it. I'll let that sit too, and then I can go back in and add another tone. If you want to bleed in a little from the center here, a little orange, do that. You know, don't get too crazy. You know, it's 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 doing this little spider thing, Spider Man. I might I might say I'm gonna manipulate it by just pushing it around a little bit. Do do do, because I think it was just making this funky little spider veins. See, there's that brush. Let's do oh a couple more of these like funky kind of mummy kind of things. And also because they're in these color tones, you don't have to keep them that way. You can change them. But I like this bright color I have here. Maybe I'm gonna get more orangey. I don't know. I also have brilliant orange. I'm gonna put some of that in here. It's kind of blush. Let's get this a little more orange. Or I just grab the orange. I have brilliant orange right here. See, this is intuitive. I'm just going through my own little brain. Slowly, let's do like a made up, whoop, get off there. Strokes. Kind of like another mum in here or chrysanthemum. Well, same name, but the longer version name. Just making these little strokes, you see? You get the same feeling. Just throwing that in. This one looks like it's dried. So you go back in with that layer. See? Boom, boom, ba -doom, ba boom. Once it's dried, do another, another layer. Keep going. The center will be like a little pale green. Do, 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 do. You see where I'm going with this? It doesn't have to look like this perfect flower. I'm gonna use that lime green, well, limey, limey green. Basically it's yellow and peacock blue. I'm getting rid of some of that red because it made it brown. I'll throw a little green in the center here. There was a little green peeking through in here too. Okay, I'm starting to get bases of flowers first. Maybe put in, I don't know if I put in a rose. I like all the dahlias, and there's a zinnia in this one, some kind of funky mums, little yellow orange mum, so I'm getting some colors, mix them up. I'm just getting drawn to these mums. I like them. Lines this way, lines that way. See, you can make them skinny, fat, skinny, and small. This brush is a great challenge brush. lines like that. That little color. The pink tone. And I mixed all three, huh? There's like a zinni up here. So now I'm getting a little... I have splattered some of my water. And it's made a mess. Let's try and clean that right away. If we don't clean that right away, it will stay. We don't want that to happen. So it's kind of pinky. We want the more like fall tones, right? So let's get some of this magenta. Let's get some of this magenta in here. Some red. Ooh. I'll add a little cobalt and you get a deeper red in here. See? Tip, tip. There we go. Aha, uh -huh. see that that one's coming through. Let's get, let's see, do we want it over there? I think I want my eye to go this way on this diagonal. So I'm going to put this kind of flower here. See? Don't have to follow the picture. Just think about where it's going to go. Get a little bit darker with my color. I'm just kind of tapping it in. Boom. Some more cranberry red tones on that side. All right, so now your eye is completely drawn up there, right? You can balance it by having another one down here. But maybe you want your eye just to go up there. Like, hello. Maybe I'll put a small one down here. So then your eye is going up and down. You, it depends on what you want the viewer to see. So compositions are about what what do you want the viewer to see? Do you want them to be 
oh, this is so pretty and nice and soothing? Or do you want them excited? <laughs> you know, that's what the artist is supposed to create. Create the painting that has the, evokes that feeling either way. Excitement or calmness or what they were going through. Sadness, all that stuff. I'll go back and take my yellow. The sunflower. I can put another layer in here. See? Just go right there. And you can do the same thing with this mummy. Mummy mum. And a little orange. Let's go back and add some deeper layers. Just that opera. See? Now that it's dried, I'm doing more wet on dry. Oh, by the way, all this is wet on dry. And here's this little one. Little strokes. Teeny, 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 teeny little triangles. And we'll create those layers. And you can get even darker, but I wouldn't get super dark with that. Maybe in just like one section, kind of on this side. Obviously, you can see I'm gearing that the light would be coming from here. All this darkness is coming on this side. All right, so we've got the basic of where the flower's going to go. And we have greens. I mixed up all kinds of greens. And we've got some rougher stems. So I'm going to put a stem in. Using that same brush, I'm not switching. So let's put that stem we see. Front umber with a little paints gray. I can make some like right here next to each other. I have to get a new palette. I'm going to be shopping for a new palette because this thing is just not working. <laughs> and I can do some little branch. And you see the branch here has like little berries off of it, so I can do like, little lines. Kind of have it coming down. Right. So your eyes all going this way. And we'll just start adding some greens. So you get some ivy in here. It looks like a, a eucalyptus, which is a great color. With, I made um, cobalt with yellow. It's perfect for that color. Time. It's like that misty gray green. There we go. Okay, so we can put some of those in there. It's a challenge with this brush. Pushing down, see how I push down? And then I kind of fill it in that way. And that would be my eucalyptus. Now, that hue is mid-tone. That's another thing we talk about in composition. The lights, darks, saturation, hue, it's mid-tone. I can make it even lighter with watercolor by adding more water. See, then we have a whole different color, different hue, different amount of saturation. Because it's lighter. It just changes, see how sweet and soft. And it's just going out here and it's really soft. And you talk very softly. <laughs> no, you couldn't hear me, but you get the idea, right? So I'm going to balance that softness again over here. It's all kind of like a dancing, I wouldn't say it's a football game, but like a game. It's like a dancing, you're moving around the floor. But here you're moving around the page. Right? soft I love that soft eucalyptus kind of look and here I'll just do a small one and maybe I'll do like a little couple of look you see some of these have look, just look these little side branches just peeking through like this you can barely see that but see that boom right here boom there you go another one just like that I'm gonna leave a lot of air in here which means a lot of openness because I like that about this one so I see the colors here I like the airiness about that one this one's got like a, a limelight hydrangea it's got ivy 
we'll start putting in some deeper greens too, kind of balance it. I'm gonna add a little brown in this. So this is Prussian blue with yellow, and I add a little burnt umber. Let me get some deeper, darker tones. Let's add some stems to some of these dahlias. And the sunflower is always a deep, dark green. Put in a leaf. So I just pushing down, wiggle, 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 pull back. I love that down, wiggle, pull back. Pretty simple. That's why some brushes are just it's so easy to create leaves. This is one of them. Petals and leaves. This cat's tongue brush is great. She always had one of these. I mean, I've used the other one so many times, the Princeton, but this one's so much fun to play with. Just making some simple leaves. See, it's starting to balance out. I'm gonna definitely go back in these uh, flowers and really kind of fill them in. Go add some green stems this way, some darker green leaves. Just kind of cascading that way. And I'm gonna add a little more brown to this green. And I'm gonna add another element of green. I've got this nice composition. It's nice to have multiple colors of greens because that's how it is in nature. So I want like a nice light. Line. So here I just grab that green. I'll throw it in a few more places like up in here. That little lime green. Oh, I'm gonna mix up some thicker paint. It's getting too wet. Okay. Little stems in here. You know, depends on how full you want this to be. How do you want it to look? Do you want to have a lot of air in between your plants and your flowers? Just putting those little stems in here and some leaves. Really not gonna make this really thick, filled inside here. You can do that if you'd like, but it's just not what I'm gonna do. See, it's kind of filled up in here. I want a lot of air. I'm gonna put some simple, you know, orange, yellow, almost like, uh, oh, I can't, my, my brain is so tired, I can't think right now. But the little berries, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, you guys will put the answer in the comments and you're like, okay, that's what it is. They come out in the fall, those little orange and red combination. We used to have them in my yard, but we don't have them anymore. And I keep, I gotta learn from my water somewhere else because I keep getting drips everywhere. I don't know if they're called sweet something. Like I said, you guys will know. And just put them in the berries there. You can add another stem, kind of put them in here. Just play around with little things. And it's nice just to look at photographs of these things. It helps, right? So now I'm gonna go back into some of these areas again. Get them a little bit thicker with the color. It's more intensity saturated now that it's dry I can add a little more points just to get that feel that it's a dahlia and then this one's the mum mum darkness I'll add some more red tones in this one I'll play around with this one a little bit add some different colors in this one even though it's mostly like that cranberry kind of red tone and then for the sunflower, let's we'll go back in and add maybe a little bit of orange or a little bit of brown. Yellow, brown, little yellow, brown, orange. Kind of in here. Push it out. And then you can add the center, the deep dark center. So it's a nice brown. I like to put a little halo, which is a little white, leave a little white there. So deep brown, a little paints gray. Or black. I don't like it super black. Sometimes I do. But sometimes it's just nice to have like just a deep brown. And that's just enough. Right? It is kind of looking a little flat, that sunflower. I'm going to let that dry and come back and maybe go back in and play around with 
adding in some more like orangey kind of you can take the brown and kind of push it out to the edges it's another little trick some of these petals you know and this is pretty much it it wasn't taking much you know to do a lot today I wanted to have a simple kind of fall bouquet to play around with I add some little more greens up in here that are kind of chartreuse colors just to play off that red tone and I love this movement we can even grab that color that we used for the eucalyptus and kind of move that up a little bit make some nice little I love to do this you know me that's kind of how I roll take some dark color and do that just adds a little bit of movement you don't have to do that but that was pretty much a simple design right using the cat's tongue brush playing around with the different elements and how I go about figuring out what I want to paint I saw the colors that I liked in this one I saw the movement I liked in the leaves and the, the combination of the stems and all these berries you could have more berries in yours right this is just giving you ideas on how to create a bouquet and a challenge catch tongue brush <laughs> right have you tried it um, so I'm giving you a challenge so let's try and do some challenges I think that will be kind of fun I'm going to call them put a comment below again for the challenge I'd love to hear what you guys think take that green out a little too much green in there do you want a floral challenge don't ask about people <laughs> it's not going to happen oh I just cracked my leg um, and by the way I'm standing up it actually helps make you really free when you paint I might just put some little pink color, color tones in here. So sneaky, sneaky peeky. Just add a little something. Orangey kind of tones. There you go, guys. Did that take much effort? No. So this is kind of almost dry. You can kind of like swipe some of the side petals or even add another element of the yellow just take the brush and just take the edge of it make little lines around like a couple of petals not everywhere because then it gets a little monotonous and ugly you see how it just kind of changed to get a little darker and get even darker still and leaves over here and there you go if you want to add more yellow because we don't have much yellow balance out the yellow here just pull it up you want your eye to pull up right to put some more yellow up in here and these little berries and that's it sweet little bouquet so I hope you guys enjoyed this I hope you guys <laughs> guys enjoyed this conversation about how to create your own bouquets or flowers florals I can't speak today don't pay any attention to me um, like I said go on the internet pick out some, you gravitate towards this is what I did but you might want something a little more cranberries and you know, go look at bouquets do a compilation of um, pictures and then figure out from there and then you'll have your own beautiful bouquet right I'm just giving you the tools on how to figure it out right and then you know color schemes how to do that and then challenge yourself with a brush try a different brush right it really 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 pulls you into a different direction it definitely does you have no choice <laughs> all right guys thank you so much I always say guys but I can't help it so thank you for stopping by I appreciate you take care have a great weekend I'll speak to you soon